Let's go into Rothwild's office. They don't seem to be here. Presented with a choice, lethal or non-lethal, I know which one I'm going with. Ames Negotiations Mr. Rothwild, my research on Abigail Ames has turned up nothing. She has no close kin that we can leverage. Looks like the plague took her sister and mother. Her father died on a whaling ship of your predecessor about ten years ago. As far as blackmail goes, she's got no secrets I could uncover. Devout as an overseer, it seems. Not surprising, since she's rejected every blackmail offer to come her way. I don't think she's making a power play. She seems to legitimately have the best interests of the laborers in mind. As I interview the workers, it seems she really has them in thrall. They'll do whatever she says, and their belief in her is absolute. If something happens to her, as in like an accident or something, I expect they'll riot. I'll keep searching for an angle on her, but in the meantime I advise leaving her intact. It might be worth even considering some of her reforms. I know that doesn't suit you, but at least you would buy some time and get the workers back in here. The butchers lack the finer skills to keep this place operational. Your servant, G. I want to meet this Abigail Ames. Interrogation. Rothwell, the interrogation chair is set up in the meat locker and fully powered. We've run some test runs on a few of the most problematic laborers. They spill all of their secrets very quickly seem to die easily after about four treatments. She is ready for you whenever you need her. Treatments. Looking around for numbers. A post-it note with a password. Kill right there. Extra elixir rations, bags of coins, bonuses. But you're about to see that my generosity is counterbalanced by a very humane side. Mr. Rothwild, Bundry. Don't call me that. That privilege is lost to you. You don't know, Ramsey. When he comes for me, he'll kill you. He'll gut you like the street filth you are, and feed you to the rats. Ah, uh, now it comes out. No one is coming. I've broken your strike, and my butchers are the finest fighters in Dunwall. Miss Ames, you're about to find out a few things I learned when I was a gaffer. I can do things that don't even hurt at first. This conversation is going to last a long, long time. Thank you. 
You're going to fight me. I can tell. This is going to be fun. Question Bundry Rothwild. So I guess I have to actually talk with them, huh? Let's make it in. Ah! Let's make an entrance, I was going to say. What? How did you get in here? You're Dowd, right? What are you doing here? Who hired you? I'm here for information about the Delilah. Who hired you? Are you here from the Regent? Maybe he's here to put you in your special chair, Rothwild. Shut up! Kill him, and I'll tell you all about Delilah. And pay you as well. Quiet! She's giving you very bad advice. You won't be taking me alive. Let him down. Did they run out this way? What, did you want the help of your friends? Because your friends don't exist, buddy. Inching closer. Stop playing and come out at once. Oh, I'll find you. Get down, it's close. How about you marinate in those juices, like the trash you are? All done. I know all about the Delilah. All of it. And I can give you exactly what you want. Please do. Not so fast. I need something from you in exchange. That's what I thought. What? We're both professionals, Mr. Dowd. I was hired to get these gutless workers striking, which I did very nicely. And then destroy the slaughterhouse itself. That's where I got caught. And that's where I need your help. How? The whale oil in those tanks out there is enough to destroy this entire place. The important industrial bits, especially. Just open all the valves at once to let the oil start flowing. The pressure will go out of control and... Boom. What about the people inside? Growing a conscience? The factory workers are already out. My boss will hire them on, in better conditions than they'd ever see here. Not the butchers, though. They can die screaming for all I care. Don't try and con me. Wouldn't dream of it. Here's the key. Don't get caught. You take care of the slaughterhouse, and I'll tell you everything I know about the Delilah. You know, I could put you in Rothwild's interrogation chair myself. Why should I bargain with you? Because it's a long and messy solution. And I'm gambling you're not the kind of man who likes that. Make a deal with me, and I can tell you what you want, and pay you for your trouble. I'll consider it. I'm absolutely going to do that. Yeah, I was thinking, like, do I really want to be non-lethal with the butchers? I mean, look what they're doing. Blow them up. Sure. Turn on four valves to build up pressure in the refinery. Oh, what else do we still have? Find the ingredients to complete Granny's recipe. Captain Withers, all of the cargo destined for Samara Tivia has been approved. Please delay loading until just before departure. 
There's a special delivery that was to be prepared by Foreman Ames, but she's been detained at the moment, so that particular shipment is suspended for now. If the special package has not been prepared by sundown, you may depart on schedule and other arrangements will be made. Remember, only our approved list of crewmen are allowed to handle this delicate cargo. Who are they planning to smuggle in those things? They'll start looking for you as soon as they notice an open valve. So move fast. Injury report code. Oh, <laughs> code. Five injuries have been reported over the span of one week, resulting in two fatalities. That's a convenient note. 512. Drop assassination gives you a bit of health? Yeah, it's kind of similar to Falling Star. Oh, except health instead of mana. management in our times. Excerpt from a book covering the approaches and personalities behind Dunwall's dominant whaling houses. Seemingly willing to risk any industrial secrets he possesses, Bundry Rothwild is granted none other than the infamous Anton Sokolov liberal access to the Rothwild slaughterhouse. Sokolov's, Sokolov is, of course, well known on several fronts. As royal physician, he served the late Empress Jessamine Caldwin. The man, originally Tivian, is a fixture in the art world as well, and his portraits are all the rage among the aristocracy. But Sokolov is of interest to Rothwell because of his work as an inventor and because of his associated role as head of the Academy of Natural Philosophy. No doubt Bundry Rothwell believes that if Sokolov spends enough time in the guts of his factories, the brilliant man will continually make invaluable adjustments to the machinery there. Who knows what industrial improvements Rothwild has enjoyed since Sokolov began hunting his, uh, haunting his slaughterhouse. And since the Rothwild process involves keeping the whales alive for sometimes days as a means of extracting more oil from the beasts, Sokolov is keenly interested in visiting so that he may perform his obscure vivisection experiments. In very few places would this be possible, so the benefit to both men is obvious. For those who have had the pleasure of touring Rothwild's facilities, a number of lessons can be taken away. The man runs a tight ship, as it were, with the lowliest workers scantily ever complaining about their role in the scheme of things. The men and women given the most menial labors are issued special cards, keyed to the mechanical locks granting access to the slaughterhouse. There is no other way in or out, and to lose the time card is to lose one's job. Lording their position over the others at the top of the hierarchy are the butchers. These men wield advanced cutting saws developed by Rothwild's top machinists working at the plans after hearing mere utterances made by Sokolov as he commented sourly on the lesser devices used in previous years. The butchers enjoy a special relationship with Mr. Rothwild because, according to the company gossip, many of them were with him in years past when he ran a whaling crew that was notorious across the empire. The pressure valves leading directly from the slaughterhouse to the Greaves refinery are a marvel of engineering, allowing the raw oil to travel in record time straight to the plant where it's processed. As a note of interest, or dare I say even humor, the local fishermen claim that the waters outside the Rothwild slaughterhouse produce the largest and tastiest 
tastiest hagfish. This is most likely due to the gut sewer leading from beneath the whale's inside and delivering their organs and offal to the dark waters of the Renhaven beyond the slaughterhouse. Why is there a floating screwdriver here? Excerpt from an investigator's report. Young Rothwild was never convicted for any of the killings. In all cases, the courts ruled that he had acted in self-defense or in the defense of his property. Not that his property was substantial. The Rothwilds were not a family of means and depended heavily on the charity of the Abbey of the Everyman. The senior Rothwild went down with the whaling ship Huntress when Bundry was only 10 years old. His mother, Ruth, was lost the following year to an industrial accident in the bottle-making factory where she worked. Rothwild became the sole guardian for his younger brother and managed to support them both by hanging around the harbor, doing odd jobs for whalers who had known his father or others on the Huntress. By then, Buntry Rothwild was already familiar with the club and the knife and was no stranger to odd occurrences. Things went from bad to worse for Rothwild when, on his 13th birthday, his younger sibling was taken by the overseers. Allegedly, the boy failed the successive trials and did not return home. Rothwild lacked the funds to pay an investigator, and no subsequent hint of his brother's fate has ever been learned. This latest tragedy to befall Bundry Rothwild instilled in him a view that the world itself was malevolent and hungry for life, especially innocent life. After a time of black mourning, he approached the whaling ship Cutter and began learning the trade from the crew. Rothwild took to whaling with great success. At sea, he hunted the beasts with a single-minded purpose and would take extraordinary risks in locating and harpooning his prey. Among the crew, those men he could not beat senseless, he outwitted. In short order, he petitioned the maritime barrister Arnold Timsch to grant a young Rothwild a whaling license paying the significant fees himself rather than relying on a sponsor for the funds. The rapid ascent of Bundy Rothwild has begun. <laughs> and ended. Records office key. Have I been in there? Wasn't it in here or something? There's a map at least. Records. Accounting? Eight. Um. Yeah, it's. What's this direction? Like, I don't quite understand how to get there. I need to get to number 9 and then go to number 8. I'm at number 7 right now, but I can't just walk into the wall. So how do I get there? It points here. Hmm. room with those tanks that it was showing. I'm not sure where those tanks are. I think it's these. Is that what this whole place is? Guess. Eh, I'm not going to worry about it.
return to Abigail Ames, shouldn't we all be running out of this place right now? It's done. Time is short. Now, about the Delilah. You're sailing in murky waters, assassin. Now, they say that ship was sold to Rothwild cheap by one of his business partners. A barrister, Arnold Tinch. They planned to sell a portion of the whale oil on the black market, instead of giving it to the Lord Regent. Treason. Would that be why you're here? My reasons are my own. The black market doesn't concern me. Interesting. Because that's only half the story. Arnold Timps sold that ship to Rothwild because he was afraid of its namesake. Timps fell in love with a painter named Delilah. It was the scandal of the season. That shrunken old lecher acting like a giddy schoolboy over a nobody. A former serving girl from the Wall Top. Let me guess. It didn't end well. It never does. But there's a mystery to this one. Something happened that frightened him very much. He dropped her overnight and sold the ship for a quarter of what it's worth. And Barrister Timps is not a man who scares easy. If you want to know more, you'll have to ask him yourself. But I very much doubt he'll tell you. I guess we're done here. I'll meet you outside. We still need the weeping eye, but I, I suppose if we just leave the slaughterhouse, that's not going to take us out of the whole zone, I think. So maybe there's still a possibility of doing it. Anyway, let's go. You might want to keep running. Oh, there's enemies again. There's an exit over that way. That is the way I want to go. I know I don't have to go that way, but I want to see what's out that way. Ah, oh, fuck! Jesus Christ, why does it do that to me? It says you can get up, but then it gets you up and over to the other side where there's nothing but death. It's a cruel trick. Try that again. Come on, don't screw me over. I don't think we need to read that. I think these are like puzzles for an alternative way in if I wanted to get in this way, but I don't need to anymore.
with Billy Lurk in preparation for leaving. So I don't want to leave yet. How do I get this weeping eye? Is there a quest marker? No, I didn't think so. I might have just accidentally disabled it. There's a bit more loot to get. The Ark Mine. Um, I don't really feel like reading that. Warning. Back pressure in the pipes is well past safe levels. All employees. Yes. Just one that I've missed. It's probably inside. Uh, yeah, looks like it's inside. My hand isn't lighting up at all. Ooh. Doesn't cancel your momentum. Can't get up there. Trinity of Rothwild Slaughterhouse. Get out now. Huh? Weird. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Get off this time. Oh. Whoops. Jesus. Come out. We both know you're weak at heart. Get up. Thank you. Let's go. I'm worried they sent for the hounds. Gotta stop doing this. This is not control. You can't cancel your momentum by zipping around. Is anything bothering you, Dad? I've seen you kill a man without ruffling his hair. You took out the whole neighborhood. Barrister Tim lives up in the legal district. I know it pretty well. From what I hear, the Timsh family is practically at war with itself. Talk to his niece Tali if you can. I should probably tag along when you go. Crazy rich people are buying up a lot of that Sokolov security technology these days. Keeps the weepers and looters out. I might be useful. Let's go. Hostiles killed, three civilians killed, 
two? When did I kill civilians? No alarms rung. Overall chaos. Hi. That was high chaos? I guess blowing up the thing does count for a lot of chaos, huh? But I found a lot of bone charms and runes. Found about 75% of the coin. It's pretty good. As a young girl, Delilah was a baker's apprentice in Dunwall Tower. Years later, a painter in Sokolov Circle. Barrister Arnold Timps paid her to paint portraits. Him, I knew. A nobleman, born rich. And now he was making a second fortune, seizing the assets of played victims for the Lord Regent. But Barrister Timps was also fighting a private war with his own niece. Something to do with the family fortune. Lurk was probably right. We needed to speak with the niece first. Her feud with the old barrister was something we could use. I got a message to the barrister's niece, and she claimed to know things about Delilah that no one else did. But the knowledge would have a price. I wasn't surprised. I went to meet her. Blueprints you found unlock these upgrades. Explosible capacity and arc mine capacity. Stun mine capacity, arc mine extra charge. Right. Well, um, again, let's buy all the favors, huh? Rune drop off. Friend will leave a rune by the ruined bridge for you to pick up. Whale oil delivery. There will be some conveniently placed whale oil tanks by the first gate on your way into the district. And no thanks. Okay, sleep darts are a must. I'm gonna max those out. Didn't use any rewire tools. I guess I don't really need anything else. Ooh, combat sleep darts. Sleep darts are effective immediately, even in combat. That's really good. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. And I guess... Sleep dart capacity? Bone charm capacity? Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to see what... Thalia? Yeah, what Thalia knows about Delilah.